What's up, everybody? Sidi Tuma back here with another NBA draft player breakdown. This time we'll be looking at J.D. Davison, the Alabama point guard, who's, you know, made an interesting decision. He came to this Alabama squad with this loaded trio of guards with Keon Ellis, Jawan, Javon Quinterly, excuse me, and Jaden Shackelford. And because of that, Davison has been playing off the bench for all but five of his 30 games this year. But, you know, he's still been effective. He's shown the athleticism, the eye-popping, eye-catching athleticism that everyone thought he had. And he's really delivered on that. But he's really shown, you know, some other traits that people are maybe a little bit surprised about or somewhat improved. The shooting for one and the passing. Man, what a spectacular passer. That's really the trait that's taken him home. But he gives you a lot of things. He's a great finisher, does a lot of things. So we'll go through, you know, some of the things that he is doing well, some of the things he can improve. But we need to start with his athleticism, right? Normally when we're doing this, we're looking through and just, you know, pointing out, okay, he's athletic in these spots. But I'm mean, just watch this play just to, you know, begin out. Watch Davison's going to be down near the basket. Get him grab a steal and just run out and transition. And here you just see it, right? The quickness, the speed, the first step, and then watch here the leaping ability. He can go up and get one. And that's that's those are kind of, you know, the basis of his traits. But what I love is how well he harnesses that, how patient he is. He doesn't just, you know, go hundred percent of the time. And because of that he plays and is a much quality much higher quality player and a very high IQ player. So like I said, it's the passing that really, you know, starts out with this guy. He is a phenomenal passer. So you're going to see over here in a little pick and roll set what Davison does so well. I mean, he's got all the traits you're looking for, right? The vision. He's got great court awareness. He can he knows where basically all nine guys are on the on the court. And he does such a good job leveraging defenses, he uses ball fakes, um, is creative passer, hits hits very difficult passes. So you're going to see over here in the pick and roll, Davison's got the ball at the top of the key. And watch him roll. As he's going down, so it's this dude over here that's going to pop out to the three-point line. But watch Davison. And watch these two defenders specifically. They are the ones that are going to be leveraged in. So, so watch Davison as he's coming in. Those two guys get clamped in. And Davison's become really good with the jump pass. And again, the awareness, right? He's bringing him to the last second. And because of that, he's holding those defenders in the air, right, with this little jump and spin. And then from there, passes it out. Open three, basket. And this is one I really love here. So you're going to watch Davis, and he's got the ball over there on the wing. And as he drives in, you're going to see the entire Miami defense collapse on him. Right? You got one, two, three, four bodies immediately on him. And what Davison does so well here is he looks off the defense, and he finds the underneath. So first, let's just watch the play as is. Right? Grabs it, looks off, and then passes inside. So... As we're watching this, there's a couple things that are important to point out that just are very subtle but are so effective, right? Number one, as Davison's driving in, he he sees obviously these two guys down underneath, and those are the ones you're kind of looking at. Um, and as he drives in, what he does immediately, you're isolating this defender, right? This is the guy that you're trying to get away to open up the passing lane. So to do that, what Davison does is he looks off. He's looking off to where the corner, basically, for his man over here who's going to be, who, who's going to, you know, be catching the eyes. So watch as Davison elevates. Watch again this defender. Watch him as he bounces out. Because the eyes are going that way and Davison's elevating, watch this defender, right? It's it's very subtle, but watch him just lean over to where it is right. Right? Watch him. He's bouncing. Right, he's over there, and because of that, because his momentum's going that way, even though it doesn't clear up a gigantic hole, what it does is it, it keeps that defender from being able to just be from a stand, standstill and jump and elevate and grab a steal and deflect that pass away. And because of that, pass gets through, and it's a basket. And you're gonna watch from the other angle that will really show you. Right. So right, you got Davidson here. So once again, this defender right here, and run through slow motion. Watch him as he. As Davison starts looking off to that to his left, watch the defender, right? He's leaning to where there. His momentum's all going that way. But then once the defender realizes, okay, the ball's in the middle, he's going to try to spring back. But because the body and the momentum's all going toward the sideline, he can't recover, right? He tries to look at him. And it's, fruit, it's an unfruitful attempt. And because of that, Davison fits that ball in there, and it's a assist and a layup and that those are the things he does that's really next level type of stuff next level passing you're talking about just you know using your eyes manipulating doing such a great job and he can hit you know all types of passes the lobs he'll do he'll do a lot of this you know pocket passes and all types of things and he throws with the very 
very good velocity. He throws with a lot of speed on his passes, which helps him really thread the needle and hit angles, hit small little windows that, you know, a lot of guys can't. You see here, right? He gets the ball in the corner. Watch the two Miami guys. They're going to immediately collapse. Davidson's going to dribble a couple times. And just watch the, you know, the the power on the pass to get it all the way across, right? The skip pass to get over there. And from there, he hits it. And that's what I'm saying. He does all these different great things as a passer. Uh, like I said, the lobs, the skip passes, the pocket passes. He hits all these different things. And he runs as a floor general so well as well. You know, you see a lot of the assists. But what he does so well is he just sets guys up. Even if, you know, he dribbles in a couple. And what, what, what this kind of combines with, you know, his aptitude to not take stupid shots, to not force things. You're going to see him so often understand what his capabilities are and what they aren't. And because of that, he's shooting 59.6% on his two-pointers. The three-point shot is, you know, a work in progress, but those aren't bad shots, even the ones he's taking. But that number is indicative of just, you know, great shot selection. And you see him, right, not force things up when he gets into a point where he collapses the defense. Not even collapses, but, you know, gets them off their spot, just a two feet, you know, the help defender. And then he'll pass it to the guy. And, you know, even though he won't get an assist, his guy will score, his guy will create, his guy will do something. And those are really the smart high IQ plays. And that's what makes a good floor general. Just get it to, you know, you might have an open three, but, you know, swing it off to someone else who has a semi-contested three because that's probably a better shot. I mean, when I say semi-contested, I mean, just not as open, but... Those are the type of things he does, and that's what makes him such a good floor general. And like I said, the three-point shots are a work in progress. The mid-range you don't see, but um, it's his finishing ability that's really impressive. Obviously, he's got the athleticism to get there, a 44.5-inch vertical. He's got the leaping ability, but he's got excellent body control. He can go up there and make plays, and he's got a whole bunch of tricks in his bag. He's got a great touch around the rim. Um, he doesn't really have a left right now. He goes very right hand dominated, which is obviously something you're going to look to improve as you know the future goes on. But um, right now he's got you know the euro step, the spin move, hop step, which you're going to see here. He's got a nice floater. But just watch this. Watch the. This is just raw athleticism. I mean, watch the hop step, right? My goodness, I have never seen a hop step that you know that effective and getting around that that much space. I mean, that's really impressive. That's like track stuff. And that's that's part of what J.D. Davison does. And like I said, he's got a lot of his finesse moves and can finish through. He's a creative finisher, but he's also a guy who can finish through contact. But over here, we'll see kind of his, you know, his very effective crossover. He, his handles are going to need to – they're not advanced yet. He, they're good, solid. It, it gets him where he needs to be, but he does a very good job of combining his handles with his athleticism. And you're going to see that here, right? As he's being picked up by Jeremy Sohan – the defender right in front of him. Watch how he kind of manipulates this pick and roll. And also, more than that, he just reads what Sohan's doing. So, first off, Sohan is making a mistake on his own merit by going over this pick. Well, this pick that should be there. So, this is going to be a pick and roll. And you're going to see Sohan again right here. So, as that pick comes, uh, the pick just kind of, he slips it, right? The, the roller slips it. He doesn't set a real pick. But... Sohan is determined to go over the pick and fight around it, and that's a mistake because, first off, J.D. Davison, you're going under. Almost everyone is going under screens. That's something that everyone's doing because they're not afraid of the shot, which is, with his athleticism, his down downhill ability, that's probably the right move. But you watch Sohan, right? He's going to jump to try to do it. Obviously, it's going to look stupid because the screen isn't there, but he's trying to jump and fight around it, right? And because of that, watch Davison set up the crossover. You got Davison going to left, and watch that hard little crossover, and now he's got all the space to attack downhill. And like I said, Sohan, it looks a lot worse because he's trying to jump that pick that he thinks is going to be there, but it all gets screwed up because of the slip. But just watch that crossover. He uses that so effectively, and that's what he does, right? It's a little crossover, and then the burst, get downhill, watch from there, step, and finish through. And here, one more time, you're going to see him run down in transition, and you're going to see him just use utilize that athleticism and strength so well it's it's the uh, understanding of body leverage also so you're gonna see him here like i said 195 pounds finishes through contact very very well so as you see davison dribbling down watch him here right he bodies out into once again sohan um to his right right so watch him just you know, get the body back and watch him lean out it's, it's smart because that way flagler number 10 for baylor can't contest it or you're not going into his body but you're bouncing off the body of the guy behind you and he can't contest it because he's behind you 
And Davison's got the strength and the body control once again to make those sort of plays, right? So as you see him there, body's back and finishes through. And like I said, he, he likes going to that right right now, but he does dribble to his left, which is good because that way you can get, you're not just, you know, dribbling one way, but also his passing, he does throw a lot of one arm slings with a lot of velocity once again, which are very effective, but they all come from the right hand. He passes most of it that way, finishes that way, obviously shoots that way, but it's, it's, uh, that, that'll kind of improve with time. And like I said, three point shot is a work in progress, shooting about 29%, but his spot up is definitely, you know, pretty solid. It's effective. He'll shoot it when it's there. He doesn't shoot a lot of attempts, only 2.5, but the majority of them are on these kind of looks. And at this point in his development, you're happy that he's not forcing up stupid shots off of, um, you know, looks just because they're open because people are going under. It's like, it's a, it's the old saying, right? You're open for a reason. So you watched um, Davison. He's over there in the corner. And as Keon Ellis, who has a ball, is breaking down this defense and gets the defense to collapse, once again, you got Davis in the corner. Watch him catch it and put it up quickly. And it's clean. I mean, the mechanics are clean. Things are good. And as he just continues practice and get better in that aspect, he's going to be more and more effective. So it's it's that's his uh, you know major caveat to his game on the offensive side. It's the pull-up game and the ability to you know create a shot in that aspect. Obviously, he can get downhill and get a basket, but his his uh his pull up game definitely needs work and you see over here where he could where like i said he or rather defenders go under most picks for him because they're not really afraid of the shot and afraid of the pull up game and he's shown flashes very small ones but here and there every like again rarely i should preface by saying rarely do you see it but he does pull up from time to time, and again, the stroke looks good, things look good. It's just a matter of, you know, tightening it up in practice and getting to that point. But you see it over here with the game pick and roll. Uh, defender gets cleanly beat off, and you got Davison right here. He's got the space. Chad Holmgren is down in drop coverage because he's not afraid of that. And Davison feels that out and just, you know, sets it up. You watch him, right? Gets over, pulls it up, and hits it. And it's, it's, he does it sometimes. He flashes it a little bit, but. That's really something he's going to need to work on. And you see absolutely no mid-range game from him, but that should be taken with a grain of salt because this Alabama system is all about layups and three-pointers. They don't re don't take mid-range shots. It's it's taking those efficient shots. So we don't know how much he really gives you from that aspect. Again, from just the shot of the pull-up, you don't you assume that there isn't much to it. But um, that'll be another thing you'd like to see. But even those stars, it's just the off-balance jumpers, the step-backs, fadeaways. You don't see any of it, and you'd like to as time goes on, you know, better range and so on. So that, that three-point shot, the uh, perimeter shooting is definitely, you know, work is going to be needed to be improved, especially as you get to the NBA where your pick and roll, things are going to be so inefficient unless you're able to, you know, force guys to go over um, screens because they go under you're giving them all the advantage but what he does and what I love right now is he compensates for that he he was patient right he's he's smart he doesn't if he guy goes under he doesn't just force something stupid he'll you know either hit the hip or you know there'll be a rescreen or reject screens or whatever to just kind of um, manipulate and do whatever he can to get downhill and you know make some create something effective which he usually does a good job of and this is something I don't think, you know, people really expect him to be of this degree. He is really shown out as a rebounder, averaging almost five rebounds a game. Um, but he does, obviously, we are with that 44, 45-inch vertical. He's able to go up and catch. On the defensive glass, I wish he would kind of, you know, box out just a little bit better. But he just has so much athleticism. He's got just a little bit of position. Watch him here, right? He's down near that rim. And just watch when the ball goes up. He just goes and grabs it, right? Because even at 6'3", I believe 6'5", wingspan, supposedly. Um, the red 6'8", other places. But you see, he goes and grabs that. But what he does really well is this on the offensive glass. And again, he also does a very good job on the defensive glass. He's got a bunch of guys on his team who are able to grab boards as well. So the number isn't crazy. He's only playing under 25 minutes a game. But over here... He has, you know, created highlight real rebounds. He had the putback dunk against Houston to win the game. 
and you see over here how he just crashes almost every single offensive glass. And when I say crash, he doesn't, you know, go force himself in every time and get lost in transition, but he's looking to creep in every time and find an angle if he can. And it's this, right? As you're going to see Jaden Shackelford in the corner, rather in the wing, on the wing, um, with the ball, and he's going to be creating off the pick and roll. And you got Davis on the top of the corner, and then his man, Nolan Hickman, over there by that free throw line. He's, he's going to be the one to watch. So as that play's happening, watch Hickman. He's going to completely fall asleep on this play. Just be ball watching and get um, into, into that play. So as you watch Hickman do that, watch Davison now. He's over there on the top. Watch him just, you know, feel that, read that out, and go in. Right, he runs in and constant you've seen multiple of these type of plays he does that so well obviously it's, it's like obviously he's got the athleticism and the ability to do that but it's the effort that you love that's what's really driving his rebounding prowess and you know when you see plays like that you think of one other guy russell westbrook and obviously you can you know blame Westbrook. you can criticize him for so many other things but that rebounding has been true because of his effort especially on the offensive glass where he's just putting in all that effort and running in as hard as he can, uh, playing with a lot of energy, and you see Davison do that in the glass, and you absolutely love that as an NBA evaluator. And this is a place where teams will really want to see him improve as well. He's got, obviously, all the physical tools to become, you know, a, a lockdown plus defender, um, but he's, and he does a good job right now as a team defender, where he slides very well, he's alert for the most times, um, but it, it sometimes he ball watches and you know gets a backdoor cut or gives too much space, those sorts of things, and just stay disciplined on defense because he gets a little overzealous on ball denials, especially when he's he's um, he wants to make a play, he wants to create a steal, but that's where the issue kind of laces in a little bit. But what he does do is he shows really good anticipation with his length and with his uh, vertical on when to jump up and contest things properly, and you'll see some of that here, right, as he's running through. Davison, you got, I think, I believe it's Hickman with the ball, and then Davison's over there covering him. Um, and watch Davison just run through, and then when the ball's going up, times it perfectly. And he's been doing a very good job of that. Um, like I said, good help defender, sliding there well, a little bit too overzealous. But overall, when you've got those sort of physical tools, those are things you can build on. And with this guy, there is a lot of upside, obviously. When you talk about that athleticism, there's still things you can even do with the shot, with the left hand, with you know putting on even more strength possibly. At 195 pounds, he's got a lot of good strength already, and you see that with, with his ability to finish through contact and a bunch of other things. But he's he's got a good package right now being projected outside the lottery. I think he's got lottery type of talent with his production and his athleticism obviously but his talent right i was averaging almost nine a game uh scoring wise but you you chalk that up to a lot of different things right but i love just his iq and his his just balance and understanding and not being too ridiculous not being a selfish player he's a very unselfish player so you love a lot of those things and i think jay davidson's gonna be really good at the next level he's got all the sort of traits of doing that uh but that's been the report on jd davison I hope you guys enjoyed the video. The full scouting report will be on dbl-coverage.com on Davison and a bunch of other guys. And again, hope you guys enjoy the video. If you did, like and subscribe, and hope you all have a great day.